Let's go. Soul not for sale. You guys know where I'm going to take you first. I'm going to take you to the store, but I'm going to break down the video for you first. Today is James O'Keefe Day. James O'Keefe has made a major breakthrough, okay? And it has to do with John Fetterman. I know some of you may have seen the clips. Special assistant to John Fetterman. His name is Luke Borwegan. He was caught on hidden camera, again, with one of these investigative journalists. Um, and he said a lot of wild things. So we're going to watch that video first. And then I'm going to bring you a video that is exclusive for subscribers only. But you guys watch this channel. I bring you the goods. That's what I do. Unofficial anchorman to the OMG network. Um, <laughs> uh, don't quote me on that, though. Uh, let's go to the store real quick. Let's go to categories, right? Let's go to all products. And let's check out all the products. Bang. Bang. We got some anti-WEF stuff. Hoodies. White. Black. Shirts. White. Black. We got, oh, the God First tee is up. Okay. I did not publish that, but somehow it's up there. I got to look into that. But it's there. It looks good. We're going to be making hoodies of the God First uh, design as well. Just like the one you've seen me wear here. We got tank tops. We got hoodies, kid sizes, shirts, mugs, t-shirts, tank tops. Every single thing you could possibly want. And every single purchase helps us fight demonetization. Helps us fight against them limiting our videos for no apparent reason. Now, let's get into the video. Here's the first video of Luke Borwegan saying some very, very... <sighs> very telling things, not just about John Fetterman, but also about the media and journalists today. Really, really interesting. Like my job is like to be like the in-between between him and the rest of the staff. I have like a, an iPad I carry around, which yeah. like live transcribes everything everyone's saying. But sometimes it misses stuff or like it'll just cut out um, mm -hmm. based on like, you know, self-service and shit. I drop him from the out there, so like he can pick up on everything they're saying. Mm -hmm. So my, I have to strong arm these journalists, and like that's, that's not my right. job, but like mm -hmm. there's so many reporters, and like the reporters, um, like they don't want we don't we shouldn't just be telling them to the off. Like if they're reporters we like, like it's good to have a good relationship with them. Yeah. We have our press operation is like a work of art, like yeah. the way that like. Like, reporters, we can tell them to f themselves, and they can't do anything because they need us more than we need them, because, like, everybody wants a f story about John Fetterman, and we only give it to certain people. And I think reporters who are like... They need us more than we need them. That is the exact opposite attitude that the government or people in the government are supposed to have with the press. There's supposed to be tension between the government and the press because the press is supposed to ask hard hitting questions. But just it's, it's just a little window into the mind of these people and what they think is acceptable and what they feel like they're allowed to do to the press and indirectly do to the public as well. Paint aren't like who we know will paint the narrative the way we want. So it's like when John checks himself up for depression, we tell one reporter, um, in particular, because like they will hit the facts that we want them to. But it's like we pick reporters who like we know will give us like a good treatment. They're desperate for an interview with John. I mean, like it doesn't mean they're bad reporters, but like if you want to access journalism, is no. It's like report. It's like reporters who will basically tell whatever story like their subject wants as long as they get the interview like there's certain like Trump journalists who are accused of that because like everybody wants an interview with the guy yeah but like that's the thing when you're so exclusive with who you give interviews to it's like the ones you pick like will just say exactly to, you know? like, so that's why you pick the journalists that you pick, because they'll say whatever you want them to. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, they won't paint it in a bad light, you know? Borwigan, special assistant to John Fetterman, says that they pick journalists that will, quote, say exactly what the f you want them to. He also says that the journalists are puppets. He actually names the journalists, including Kara Swisher and the group Pod Save America, 
behaving like puppets for the John Fetterman campaign. And just real quick, when he mentions those two people, I'm going to look into that journalist. I believe her name was Kara, he just said. And then Pod Save America. If you're a listener to that podcast, um, I, I wouldn't say don't listen to it, but at least know what kind of information they're bringing you. This is amazing. And, and here's the thing. This is one assistant to John Fetterman. What about all the other assistants to people in Congress, to the president, to, to uh, you know, high level tech executives? Like, how far does this go where they're just picking certain people? These people are saying exactly what like, I mean, this is what we know is happening in the mainstream media. We see it time and time again when we're watching MSNBC or CNN or ABC. We see it happening. But to just have somebody talk about it so point blankly, like this is what we do. We're only picking certain people. This explains so much of the 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 I want to say the climate of journalism today. When you see people and you're like, why is this person just par I can tell they're just parroting out nonsense. This is not the real story. I know it's not. Well, this is why. Because they want the story so bad that they're willing to say whatever they have to. Or, or willing to say not whatever they have to, whatever they're told to, which is much worse. Who? Uh, Joe Scarborough. Joe Scarborough? Yeah, uh, Scarborough. Like, um... You ever heard of like Morning Joe? Morning got a guy that you guys did an inter interview with. Yeah, and he actually sucks. Uh, Pod Save America. It's like these former um, pods. Of, uh, Pod Save America, like podcasts. Oh, Pod Save America. Yeah, like they're these former Obama staffers. Okay. Who like they were like one of the first big political podcasts. Mm -hmm. I think they're like the number one political podcast in the country. Um, just because like they've had it for like ten years and like built a brand on it before anybody else had podcasts. Yeah. Um, we did an interview with them post-stroke, like, a month out from the election. Okay. And they did really well. Because you knew they would go along with what you wanted? Oh, yeah. So who are those well, journalists that you guys like? Um, did we have an interview with Time? It's Time? Time Magazine, yeah. Okay. There's this, like, tech reporter who... Is also has like veered into political stuff. And her name is Kara Swisher, and she like has multiple podcasts that I listen to like every okay. single day. Kara, Kara yeah, Swisher, she's is, like one of the best. Is she one of the ones that has interviewed Fetterman though? Um, it's so interesting, but I want to know who is. they are because I'll I'll listen to those people. Um, there's like puppets though. Of Politicians in Washington are often loath to reveal their actual positions on matters of public policy. John Fetterman and his campaign staff are no exception. Luke Borwigan sheds light on the matter, discussing the views on firearms that his boss has and his boss owns, while also revealing John Fetterman's true intention to ban the Second Amendment. This raises concerns about the future of the United States of America, including what other constitutional amendments that the Congress critters want banned. Luke Borwigan, special assistant to John Fetterman, says that they would be okay with, quote, like probably overturning the Second Amendment. Just a real, before we get into that, because he's about to say some wild stuff, like James just said, but the fact that he just called them puppets, the fact that this number one political podcast in the country, which I'm going to just check out and see if that's actually true, but their former Obama staff members just... To me, it's mind blowing. And again, that's because I'm grassroots podcasting, been podcasting for like seven years now. And every podcaster I know, we just like we just start up. We just decide that we're going to talk about some stuff, whatever it might be. And to think that the number one people are <laughs> so on board, because anytime I think of a podcaster, I always think independent. I always think independent media. I always think, you know, someone who's doing it in a spare room in their house like I am. But obviously that's not the case. And the other silly thing that Luke said is that this Kara Schwisser, Schwisher, Schwisher person, he listens to her every day, fully aware that she will just say whatever narrative her interview, her interviewees tell her to. Like, I, it makes no sense to me. This is so ridiculous. 
All like the time. red flag laws? Oh yeah. yeah. Hell red yeah. Flags, automatic rifles, like all that. I love that. He, he owns like a lot of guns. Does he own the guns that he's trying to ban? No. <laughs> Not like auto, like shotgun. Like I'm sure. Yeah. Know. So what exactly will he try to ban? Yeah. Assault weapons, like assault weapons ban. Like he probably he'd be okay with like overturning the Second Amendment, probably. Like I think he'd much rather prefer like nobody have guns at all. So so he would be for like he would be for like completely just removing the Second Amendment thing. Right? Right? Oh God, no. Very specific question. Honesty is so important in the United States of America. If we do not have informed consent, if we do not have actual information that's unfiltered, unprejudiced, unbiased, and uncensored, we simply don't have the information required for us to elect our representatives, and therefore we cannot actually have freedom. Freedom itself becomes an illusion without access to unfettered, no pun intended, information. We want you to wear a camera and follow the footsteps of this brave journalist who recorded this aid. Who well, from that little clip there, I completely understand why Luke was uh, saying all these things, willing to say so much. I, uh, I, I get it now, Luke. Jeez. Uh, just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable that this gentleman is not only was willing to say that type of stuff, but that he's willing to <laughs> that he's willing to go along with it and separate thing completely or you know goes right along with it. If you are in the vicinity to elect someone like John Fetterman um, or, or if, if you have any impact or if you can write in to where he is and, and talk about this, you should. A hundred percent you should, because somebody like this shouldn't be in a position of power. You know, the Second Amendment is very important, very important. And if his special assistant is saying, yeah, he'd probably be OK with turning it over. That's because that special assistant isn't quite saying everything. And he probably knows a little more than he's saying to some girl that he's on a date with. So if he's willing to just say that in public to someone he's just on a date with who he doesn't even know that well, I would imagine that those sentiments ring true and much louder than he's he's giving away right now. Um, this is the end of that video. Let's go over to James O'Keefe actually confronting this gentleman. This is the fun stuff. That was just a little bit of background so you guys understand why James O'Keefe is asking the questions he's asking and why Luke is running away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so quick, ducking and dodging. Let's go. Hey, Luke. Is this seat taken? My name, my name is James O'Keefe, and the uh, the person you're expecting actually works for me. It's so interesting. You're on video saying that John Fetterman uh, wants to ban the Second Amendment. Like he probably he'd be okay with like overturning the Second Amendment, probably. Like does he want to ban any other amendment? I don't speak for uh, the senator. You don't speak for him? You say you pick journalists who will say exactly what the f*** you want them to say? The ones you pick, like, will just say exactly what the f*** you want them to say, you know? What do you, what do you mean when you say that? Do you, you, they, you, you call them your puppets? How are the journalists your puppets? Uh, Luke? Luke? I am the father. Hey, Luke, um, how are they your puppets? Come on, man. We're here in uh, we're here in Washington D.C. with Luke, special assistant to Fetterman. Um, why don't you just Why don't you just talk to us instead of running away? You're on video I'm saying these. I don't speak for him, man. Well, what What did you mean when you say the journalists are your puppets? That they say whatever the f you want them to say. Those are your words. They came out of your mouth. They came out of your mouth. Where are you going? What What why does he wear blue collar clothes? Has he ever done manual labor before? I used to do manual labor as a kid. But it's this phony artifice that people hate about politics. So I got some nice running shoes on. Do you like my shoes? I, I was, there was someone that inspired this wardrobe. So if you can't tell what James means, he's literally dressed like John Fetterman. <laughs> 
he he went to the store and bought that outfit exactly for this interview and uh and it's just wild to see these people running after they say these things right it's uh and what's really interesting, I just want to throw in there real quick. Look at how these journalists, the un investigative people, are running around this guy right now. This is actually some amazing work. Really things to take note on for myself. You say he wants to, quote, ban the Second Amendment. Again, are there any other amendments that he wants to ban? Like, what about the First Amendment? Does he want to ban the First Amendment? It seems like he does because you say you pick journalists that will say exactly what the, quote, you want them to say, quote, we know they'll paint the narrative that we want them to paint. Is that the role of journalism in society to just paint whatever narrative you want? I mean, shouldn't journalists be skeptical of those in power? Where are you going? Why are you pivoting this way and that? Sort of like an allegory for Washington. <laughs> it just, it's all just phony, isn't it, Luke? Why did you get into politics? Was it to, to, to save mankind for the greater good? Solve the world's problems? Now look at you. I have no comment. We have lots of comments. Great night. I'm having a great night. I'm not sure about you. Um, so, I also got you a, I got you a little gift here. Uh, it's a fanny pack. It's a fanny pack, so you can put the various sundries in the fanny Luke's walking into the restroom. I don't know where he's going. He's zigging, he's zagging, he's going all over the place. He's confused, scared. He's going to hide in the restroom? Is he hiding in the restroom? And Luke is hiding in the restroom. Wow. Whoa. Luke from the Fetterman campaign is hiding in the restroom. We've seen that before with Katie Hobbs. <laughs> this is incredible. So basically, uh, this gentleman hides in the restroom for almost the majority of the video. I'll skip to the part where he actually does come out of the restroom. It does take a minute. But funny enough, when it comes to this whole thing, because James walked in there with about two or three people, and he doesn't get thrown out which is great to see that he's not getting thrown out at a at a place like this cuz usually they'll see a microphone and they'll they'll see stuff like this and yeah he he just uh he didn't get thrown out at all which I'm loving he's hiding in the bathroom oh i i think that is actually where it ends he doesn't actually come out of the bathroom but let's watch he's hiding in the bathroom <laughs> we shall wait for him and that's that that that's gonna that's gonna be a touchdown. <laughs> Ready? All right. So, tatty tat tatty titty. Ready? Ready? Yep. Okay. Well, it's James O'Keefe here in Washington D.C. on the corner of 18th Street and N Street. In I'm in front of the restaurant Tatty. And Luke, the special assistant to John Fetterman, is hiding in the bathroom. He weaved this way and that. He bobbed and weaved through the street, back and forth he went. And then he hid in the bathroom, saying that he cannot speak for the campaign, even though he did speak for the campaign. We have most comments of him saying that he spoke for the campaign, but he's saying that he can't speak for the campaign. Obviously very, very terrified of being caught, uh, actually being honest, right? Not surprising what he said, but he said it. The question is, should OMG stand here and wait for him to come out? I'm not sure. We're trying to figure this out right now, thinking aloud. Um, we wonder who he's texting, who he's calling, his handler, his chief of staff. It's unclear who this man is, is speaking to. This guy is just a gem, uh, just a gem. So this is the rest of the video. He, the gentleman does not come out at all. Um, and it's just crazy to see, crazy to see what is happening uh, in in the inner workings of being a special assistant to someone like John Fetterman. The fact that they can actually handpick certain journalists and that those journalists, those spineless journalists, will actually just do whatever they're told. They will commit to any story or any narrative that the special assistant says that they have to adhere to. It's, it's nuts. 
I can't, I actually can't believe that that's how it works. Now, I obviously we know that the mainstream media will parrot out certain narratives, but this is to like a different level because this is very specific. It's like, you want to interview with this person, you're going to say this, this, and this, you're going to put out this story, and that's how the interview happens. So from now on, when you see stuff like this, you have to kind of wonder, you know, is this a journalist who's asking questions, hard-hitting questions? Like, for sure, any questionnaire you see, uh, any interviewer you see of Biden, obviously those questions have been handpicked by his special assistant. Anything you see with Kamala Harris, any, any person in the government now, you really have to look at it and be like, oh, this person's getting lobbed questions. It even makes me, and you know, sorry to say, it even makes me question what happened with Elon Musk and uh, Ron DeSantis yesterday on the, on the Twitter spaces. You know, Megyn Kelly was in that room. You know, Ingram was in that room. There's a lot of reporters in that room. Why weren't they able to ask questions? Maybe because those questions that he was being asked were actually lobbed, were actually planned. So, sucks to say, but better to know than not know. So, I just wanted to bring you guys that content. There will be much more content that is for subscribers only, and if you come to this channel, you will find that content. And other than that, oh, and in the comments, let me know what you guys think. And what do you think of the exclusive content? You guys want more of that exclusive content? Let me know in the comments if you actually do, because if you do, I'll keep bringing it. If you don't, then I, I couldn't imagine why, but you can let me know that as well. And uh, other than that, I am out. Love James O'Keefe. Great, man.